We're going to have a little different story uh, program tonight. I don't have any big theological thing to share with you or any guidance in anything in particular. Uh, sometimes we like to just pick a subject that you're interested in and it kind of review the little things, you know. We don't have to have everything outstanding and, and a, a big deal, but we thought tonight that we would try to share with you some sevens that are in the Bible. And there's a lot more than we'll be able to do tonight, believe me, as we opened the, the Bible and some books and uh, we thought it would take a week to do them all, but uh, we're just happy to share some of it with you. We start out in Genesis, of course, the biggest seven in the Bible is the seven days creation and the seven days of the Sabbath and things like that. But we tried to start out with the Sabbath and, and creation in seven days and then end our study this evening if we have time to finish on the uh, on the on the Sabbath. Genesis two, two and three. Uh, we probably won't have time to look all these up, but I'll just try to share them with you. It says, On the seventh day God ended His work which He had made, and He rested on the seventh day from all His work which He had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it He rested from all His work which God had created and made. Now some people say, oh, the Sabbath is a Jewish thing. But we looked at several different places and found out that it was about 2,500 years, I think, before there was ever a Jew that there was a Sabbath. So approximately, let's see, Exodus from Egypt is when we started that, that 2,500 years. And that's when Israel became a nation. Exodus 20:12. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths, to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. So we see throughout the Bible that that's a sign between uh, us and God that, uh, that, we lo uh, that He loves us and uh, we are His children. And uh, just like to take a minute, would somebody like to say why, tell us why was the Sabbath created? Do you have any ideas? Why did God come up with a Sabbath day over here? For God over there to have a special time with us. And it's a sign of loyalty to Him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. That's a good answer. He, he, uh, loves us and wants to be with us and he wants us to keep his day holy and not on our own. Anyway, Genesis 7, 1 to 3, and the Lord said unto Noah, now this is the story of Noah and you, sorry, go ahead. Mm-hmm. It sounds very good. It's, it's also interesting that uh, of all the seven days of the creation, Sabbath was actually, uh, it was on the end of the Sabbath day that God pronounced it as uh, sanctified, that He blessed the Sabbath day and sanctified. So He spent the whole day, and at the end of the day, He said, He said, okay, I'm going to bless this day, I'm going to sanctify it. And, uh, and He... If you can imagine, if God really enjoyed something that He was, that He Himself was blessed by, by observing the, the Sabbath day, by seeing everything He did, can you imagine the blessings that are in store for us mm. to observe and enjoy it just as He did? Amen. And it's the only day that He sanctified and blessed of the seven. Anybody else? In the back. It's a memorial to the creation and the creator. Like in six days he created. 
You know, it's probably a good thing we have Sabbath because we'd work seven days a week and die young. Okay, this next one is concerning the story of Noah. You all know that story, so I'll just read Genesis 7, 1 to 3. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee I have seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take thee by sevens. And the male and, the, and his female and the beasts that are not clean you only take two of each. So that tells us right there that maybe the importance of eating the clean things that he, he made for us to eat. Of fowls of the air by sevens and the male and his female keep the seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Anyway, I thought it was interesting that he made uh, seven each of all of the clean animals, which they were, were clean back then more than they are now, I'm sure. Exodus, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to double up here. Genesis 7, 4, and 5, for after seven more days, I will cause the rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. And Noah, according to all the Lord had commanded him. And Noah did all that God had commanded him. So that was God's final warning to Noah. And he just gave him a week. He said, you know, in 40 days the rain's coming. I guess whether you're ready or not. But And... Uh, uh, and he would bring the rain and, and know, know that uh, it turned out after Noah had been preaching 120 years and then he had only one week. He said, God said the time is here. Genesis 29, 16. Now this is about Laban and his two daughters. And uh, the name of the elder was Leah and the name of the younger was Rachel. And in 29, 18 to 20, and Jacob loved Rachel, the younger one, and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Labor said, as Laban said, it's better that I give her to thee than I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had for her. But it turned out that the seven years wasn't enough. And he served another seven years and then another six years. So he, uh, he really did love Rachel. But he ended up marrying both of them. Okay. Keep these straight. Genesis 41, dream one. This is the dream of, uh, that, that Pharaoh had, remember? He had a dream, and behold, he stood by the river. Suddenly there came up out of the river seven cows. So we're staying with that number seven. Fine looking and fat, and they fed the meadow. Verse three, then behold, seven other cows came up after them out of the river, ugly and gaunt, and stood by the other cows on the bank of the river. And the ugly cows ate up the seven fine looking and fat cows. What is the meaning of that? Anyone have an idea? What was that? It was a time of plenty and a time of panic. Okay. Okay. It just, yeah, it just seems funny when you read it that the skinny ones ate up the fat ones and whatever. And uh, he slept and dreamed a second time, and suddenly seven heads of grain came up on one stalk, plump and good. Then behold, seven thin heads. So here we go again. Blighted by the east wind sprang up after them, and the seven thin heads devoured the seven plump and full heads. 
So Pharaoh awoke, and indeed, it was a dream. And this was a dream that God gave Pharaoh, and uh, he let him know that it would happen right away. It wasn't something in the future. So is there a, another explanation for that one, or is it the same same thing? Okay. Seven good years and seven lean years. Interpretation of the dream. Here's some more sevens. Seven cows, seven ears of corn is equals seven literal years. So in Genesis 41, it tells him the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. So God don't mess around when it's time. He says, this is it. Exodus 21, 12, if thou buy an Hebrew servant, six years shall he serve. And the seventh year, he should go out free for nothing. So we don't have servants nowadays, but uh, that's kind of an interesting thing. If, if we did it that way nowadays, how would that look to us? And like a Sabbath, it, we work seven days and then take a, a, a Sabbath rest. Okay, Exodus 23, 10 and 11. It's going to pause and go to verse 6 of that same chapter. Maybe that's 7 and 2. It's taken dead. You may have seen this. But you know, it's supposed to go out free to 7. But if he says, I like my master, I'll stay there. And there's one more fall in the year, a whole. And the last part of verse 6, he shall serve him forever. Forever. Right. I mean, he's not going to be. I mean, what happens is the master goes to hell and the servant she go to hell and he goes. It, it just, it's another verse that says forever so as long as you live. So. That could get complicated. Anyway, there's a lot more in these it just because of a time restraint. We just had to take the highlights. Exodus 23, 10, and 6 years thou shalt sow thy land and shalt gather the fruits thereof. But the seventh year thou shalt let it rest and lie still, that the poor of thy people may eat, and what they leave the beasts of the field shall eat. In like manner thou shalt deal with thy vineyard and with the olive yard. So God was even providing for the poor and the, and the animals, that uh, uh, leaving them something to eat. So we plant every year. We Maybe if we planted six years and rested one, our gardens would do better, you think? Mm -hmm. But that's the way they did then. That's the way God had them to do. And, uh, Twelve. Okay. Exodus 23, verse 12. Six days shalt thy labor and do this work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest, and thine ox and thine ass may rest and the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. And this is the same as the fourth commandment. So all of the slaves and all of the working animals would get that day of rest. And I've got all of these here, which we will definitely not have time to go into, but if you want to look at that, you know, and and study some, some more points of it and read a little bit longer verses. Revelation 4, 5, And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. I wish we had time to go into each one of these, but, but I don't think we do. Yeah, we need to wind up here. Revelation eleven fifteen, and we're getting down the end of the of the Bible now, and they run into some different sevens. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, "The kingdoms of this world are becoming the kingdoms of our Lord, and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever." And that's good, and He will. 
Revelation 15, 1, I saw another angel in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. Revelation 15, 7, and one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of wrath and, and uh, the wrath of God who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with the smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. So it'd be interesting if you like this week to go back and listen to some of, the, uh, read some of those uh, and go a little bit deeper. Revelation 14, 12, here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And there are 10 commandments, not nine. So that's where the seven came out of that one. Let's see what we can wind up here. I wish we had a little bit more time. Uh, but I know some of you may have not had supper yet. You might want to go home and eat, but you don't want to wait too late. And when Jesus comes back, he says, here's the patience of the saints. Here are those that keep the commandments and the faith of Jesus. So that song... When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. I know we all we we all like like that song and uh, and many others. I wish I had a little bit more time, but uh, let's see if I can find the end here. I was hoping to get hoping to get some people to read some of the text, but I think it would have taken a lot longer. Uh, to do it that way, but I think maybe we're running out of time. But Jesus, when he comes back, says, here's the patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments. And elsewhere in the Bible, it says, uh, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So if somebody doesn't love him, uh, they don't keep his commandments, they don't keep his commandments, According to him, they don't love him. So the important, the importance of the commandments are, are, uh, are great. And I know that when he comes back, I want to be in that number. And I know every one of you here tonight do. And uh, we can't just say, I'll do my best because our best is never good enough. But if we can turn our lives over to Him and trust in Him, and that's easy to say. Sometimes it's not as easy to do as it is to say. But that's the way we have to do. Uh, different characters in the Bible ask Jesus, what do I have to do to, to be saved? And the one, He said, sell everything you've got and follow me. And the guy turned away because he was not willing to do that. So we can ask ourselves, what are we willing to do to have eternal life? And it's not what we can do, but what Jesus did for us. And our faith and our trust in Him will get us there, not things that we can do. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank You again for the opportunity to be here. I wish uh, we had a little more material. Uh, uh, we run out of time so quickly, but we know uh, that time for this earth is running out and running out fast. And there's no going back and, and uh, rewinding when it's over with, but we just pray that you'll be with everyone in this building tonight, that we will be willing to do whatever or give up whatever, give up everything, whatever you want us to do help us to be willing to do that and whatever you ask us to do away with that we'll be willing to do that and uh, 
pray that you'll be with us the rest of this week and help us to think about that and and make that decision and uh, thank you for hearing us when we come to you in Jesus name amen, amen.